from his home, he didn't like being seen as a dissident. It's maybe apocryphal, but apparently when he first went back to the Czech Republic after 1989, he wore a disguise, like a fake moustache and stuff, so that he wouldn't be recognized. He was always interested in humor, especially in the face of something deathly serious. In a rare 1983 interview with the Paris Review, he says, My lifetime ambition has been to unite the utmost seriousness of question with the utmost lightness of form. And mixing the two together, Milan Kundera said, reveal something honest about our lives. Andrew Limbong and Pierre News. This is Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm Michelle Martin. And I'm A. Martinez. And I'm Michael Hill. Marketplace Morning Report is next on WNYC. And later on Morning Edition, Senate Democrats and Republicans grilled PGA Tour officials yesterday over their proposed merger with the Saudi-owned golf league Live. The hearing was about more than just the game of golf. It's about how a brutal, repressive regime can buy influence. More on the hearing and the pending league deal in about 15 minutes. Seventy six and sunny out there right now with an air quality alert all the way through tonight. Sunny and ninety three for a high today with chances of showers tomorrow, tomorrow night, through Friday and through the weekend. Again, seventy six and sunny at six fifty one. WNYC is supported by Carnegie Hall, presenting Sir Andrew Davis conducting the National Youth Orchestra of the United States on July 14th. On the program, Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique and Barber's Violin Concerto featuring Gil Shaham. Tickets at carnegiehall.org. On the next Brian Lehrer Show, your evolving relationships with the tech giants. Are you one of the hundred million people who signed up for Thread since it debuted last week? If so, what's it like for you? And did you leave Twitter or just add on? Also, a call in for Amazon Prime Day on why you're cutting back on online shopping as the pandemic emergency has eased. The Brian Lehrer Show, weekdays at 10 a.m. on WNYC. What are you going to do with the money the number two bank in America has to put back in so many accounts? Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Indeed, a streamlined hiring solution. Indeed helps businesses attract, interview, and hire candidates. Learn more at Indeed.com slash hire. And by Grammarly, offering Grammarly business to help companies large and small communicate better and move faster with enterprise-grade generative artificial intelligence. Learn more at Grammarly.com slash business. I'm David Brancaccio in New York. We have more details this morning on the $100 million Bank of America has to give back to customers for wrongly dinging people, sometimes over and over and not making good on other promises to customers. It'll also pay another $150 million in penalties. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau enforces federal consumer financial laws. Rohit Chopra is its director. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So in the case of the overdraft fees, a customer tries to take out more money than they have. That's not allowed, and there's a fee. But they may have ended up paying a fee more than one time for that one withdrawal? That's right. We found that banks are charging all sorts of fees to customers who may not have enough money in their account. And there's all sorts of ways they generate more of these fees. Some of it involves reordering payment transactions so that people might think they have enough money, but once it's reordered, they pay even more. In this case, we found that a single transaction might lead to multiple fees because of the way they set up their systems. Another piece of this was opening accounts without customers' permission. I mean, is this about fine print on approval forms, or were accounts open that customers had no intention of opening? 
It's more the latter. I think what we have found across a number of banks is pressure cooker sales goals pushed on employees. This was, of course, most famously discovered at Wells Fargo about a decade ago, leading to so many illegal applications and enrolling consumers' accounts that they never wanted and without their knowledge. We identified this occurring at Bank of America and have ordered them to clean up these practices and they will be suspending their sales goals that led to these fake accounts. For people who have or had B of A accounts, what's the process? Do customers have to figure out where they've been dinged and then prove it? So consumers do not need to do anything to get these refunds. And in many cases, those refunds have already started. We identified illegal activity in Bank of America's credit card business where they withheld rewards in the form of cash. Those are all going to happen automatically. The CFPB, though, is not going to take Bank of America's word for it will be closely supervising the remediation process. Bank of America got a statement to us saying they've gotten better about these practices. Quote, we voluntarily reduced overdraft fees and eliminated all non-sufficient fund fees in the first half of 2022. I suppose that's progress. What I share with many bank CEOs is that laws are not suggestions for them. These are not something that small banks or individuals can just shrug and ignore. Bank of America was operating many of its businesses illegally, and we are forcing them to change that. It is good that banks are suspending some of their junk fee practices, but there's more to do to make sure that consumers are being treated fairly. Rohit Chopra, director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, a federal outfit based in Washington. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks again. The CFPB found B of A also failed to pay rewards dollars and bonus points promised for signing up for a credit card there. More on that in our podcast if you miss that section on the air today. Microsoft, which makes its video game console, has won a court's approval to move forward with its $69 billion purchase of Activision Blizzard, which makes video games. It's called a vertical merger, two companies addressing different parts of the same industry. This ruling is a defeat for the Federal Trade Commission, led by Lena Khan, who's been trying to use antitrust laws to challenge this type of combination. Marketplace's Stephanie Hughes has more. Rutgers law professor Michael Carrier compares the FTC's antitrust fights to it playing a vintage video game, Asteroids. We have all these asteroids in the shape of big tech that are coming in, and the question is whether or not they have the appropriate artillery. And Carrier says these legal challenges to big vertical mergers are tougher to win on because they could have pro-competitive effects. There could be efficiencies for consumers. However, the increased scrutiny that comes with the FTC's lawsuits may act as a deterrent against anti-competitive behavior. Mark Lemley is a law professor at Stanford who's represented both Microsoft and Activision on unrelated matters. The FTC's sort of aggressive stance against mergers has certainly made companies think twice about merging. But he says if the FTC doesn't win these legal challenges, its artillery is less effective. I'm Stephanie Hughes for Marketplace. Markets S&P and NASDAQ futures are both up two-tenths of a percent now. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by UKG, an HR payroll and workforce management solution designed with people in mind to help make a fairy tale workplace a reality. UKG, our purpose is people. And by C3 AI. C3 Generative AI provides chat GPT enterprise search that is verifiable, secure, and accurate across all enterprise data. C3.AI. This is Enterprise AI. With this persistent heat wave, oof. In Arizona, Texas, and beyond, the Biden administration is directing new funding to help vulnerable families and other measures to help communities cope. Here's Marketplace's Nancy Marshall-Genzer. 
The White House has spent more than $3 billion to help cover low-income households' cooling costs, open cooling centers, and distribute air conditioners. There's a weatherization program from the Energy Department and money to help modernize the electric grid. There's funding to help make schools safe spaces during extreme heat, and when smoke from wildfires makes the air unsafe. The administration is also developing standards to protect workers during extreme heat. The White House says so far far, there have been a dozen weather events this year costing a billion dollars. I'm Nancy Marshall Genser for Marketplace. And in New York, I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report. We're from APM, American Public Media. WNYC supporters include Audible Theater, featuring new performances from Eva Noblezada, Gabriel Byrne, Andre Royo, and more this summer as part of Audible's catalog. More at audible.com slash summer theater. The next big fight over college admissions is underway and centers on a different minority, those with family ties to a school. For too many schools, the only people who benefit from the system are the wealthy and the well-connected. Should where your parents went to school count for anything with those who get to weigh who gets in and where? Rethinking legacy preferences, next time on 1A. Weekdays at 3 on WNYC or live stream it at WNYC.org. This is WNYC FM HD and AM New York. Good morning. Americans are braving extreme weather on both coasts. Climate scientists say without immediate action to slow the climate crisis, global temperatures will keep rising. The last nine years were the warmest since modern record keeping began. So we do see more heavy precipitation events, more flooding, and in some regions, more drought driven by climate. I'm Michael Hill. It's Morning Edition from NPR and WNYC. issued in the southwest as extreme heat meets high winds. In the Hudson Valley, cleanup continues after deadly flooding. And New York City is under an air quality health advisory through tonight. It's Wednesday, July 12th. Today in 67, white police officers in Newark brutally beat a black cab driver. The days of unrest that followed would become known as the Newark Rebellion. The news is next. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Corva Coleman. On the sidelines of the NATO summit in Lithuania today, President Biden is joining fellow leaders of the G7. NPR's Asma Khalid reports they'll announce long-term commitments to support Ukraine. Biden plans to make an announcement alongside Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky to bolster Ukraine's security. Amanda Sloat is the Biden administration's senior director for Europe. The United States along with G7 leaders, will announce our intent to help Ukraine build a military that can defend itself and deter a future attack. The White House says the declaration being announced today signals a commitment to building a joint long-term defensive force for Ukraine to ensure stability that will send a message to Russia. This commitment also comes despite no concrete timetable for Ukraine to join NATO. Asma Khalid, NPR News, Vilnius, Lithuania. People in Vermont are cleaning up after catastrophic flooding this week. It's not raining anymore, but rivers are still above flood stage, and several Vermont dams have been pushed to their limits. Water has receded in Vermont's capital, Montpelier, but mud fills areas of downtown where significant flooding had cut off parts of the city. Southern and western states are facing dangerous heat. Forecasters have posted excessive heat watches, advisories and warnings from California to the central plains. It's even excessively hot in Florida. Christian Sococcio 